I grew up in a nominally Catholic home. I rebelled against Catholicism at a very early age, also at an unusually early age for the time, and primarily through the influence of older friends, although they are not responsible, I am entirely responsible. I was introduced into the drug culture, and once introduced, uh, sadly and to my shame, I pursued all that was offered there, all that was present there, I pursued it with a passion. For a period of years, on a daily basis, I was high. And what began with simple marijuana ended up progressing to all manner of hallucinogenics. And eventually, I was taking LSD on a daily basis as if it were vitamin C. The only thing I did not do was heroin. And the only reason I did not do heroin was because I was afraid of shots. And so as I would sit with some of my friends who did do heroin, I just couldn't imagine shooting up. I couldn't imagine giving myself a shot, and I certainly was not going to allow them to give me a shot. And that is all that restrained me from heroin. I had no interest in the gospel. I was ignorant of the gospel. I had no category for gospel. I had no category for church. I had, I had no theologically informed categories in my heart and in my mind. And sadly, and to my shame, I was not only passionate about sin, I sought to recruit others to participate in sin with me. I sought to train others in the sins I was committing. I loved sin. I loved to sin. Had you encountered me in my pre-conversion state, you would have not encountered somebody who was contemplating Issues of life and creation and meaning and future. I had a few friends like that. When we get high, they start asking questions about existence and meaning. And I made it very clear to them that that's not what this is about. <laughs> that that wasn't helpful. That that didn't serve me as I was ascending on this trajectory of whatever drug I had ingested that evening. And that if they were going to continue with this kind of discussion, well, then I was going to exit because I was there to party. I loved pleasure. And I did not want to contemplate any issues of meaning and life and future. And if you confronted me and said, you know what? The gospel will provide a joy that exceeds and transcends what you are experiencing. I don't think I would have had a category for that. I think I would have argued with you. I think I would have studied you to some degree and said, look, I'll match what I'm experiencing with your experience. If you just said you're unhappy or tried to convince me I was unhappy, I would have said to you, pal, you must not have spent very much time with me. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm enjoying all I am doing. I am deriving pleasure from everything I am involved in, all that the drug culture has provided for me. There, I, I lack restraint, and I'm enjoying the lack of restraint. I do not fear authority. I love to sin, obviously didn't identify to sin, but I loved it. A friend of mine who had, in effect, participated in leading me into this world, relocated to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and a few weeks after he relocated, he somehow wandered into a Southern Baptist church where he heard the gospel. He not only heard the gospel, he was regenerated. He then turned from his sins and trusted in the Savior, and then just a few weeks later, he returned to Maryland with one passion and purpose. He wanted to share the gospel, what he understood of the gospel, with all who were his friends. And by the grace of God, I was one of his friends. So one night, he asked to meet with me. And I assumed it was so that we could rejoin and party together. We met initially at my house. And as I sat down, I pulled out some hash, if my memory serves me, and I offered some to him. He declined. I was momentarily perplexed, but not deterred from participating myself. <laughs> and as I began to smoke, he began to share. I've only been a Christian a few weeks. Didn't really know much. Oh, but he knew enough. And he communicated to me the gospel about Christ and him crucified, about a savior who died for my sins. And at some point, 
as he shared the gospel in between totes on that pipe, God acted upon me. Now, please understand, to my knowledge, this is the first time I ever heard the gospel. And the first time I ever heard the gospel, I experienced the miracle of regeneration. I turned from my sins. I trusted in the Savior for forgiveness of sins. And that evening, my life was dramatically transformed. He left me a King James Bible. I didn't understand a word I was reading in that Bible. <laughs> Not word one. And yet, I couldn't stop reading this book. I was underlining passages. Had you been there and said, why did you underline that? I would have said, I don't know. But it... <laughs> I, would, I, would, I don't think I comprehended anything I read. I just had some awareness that within this book were the words of eternal life. My affections were altered. I no longer loved in the same way. I don't want you to think that there was the complete subsiding of sin in my life. There, there was not. He was the only Christian I knew. He then went back to Fort Lauderdale. I was left there by myself. I had no category for church. I'm just newly converted. I have new affection. I have new passion. And within a short time, I found my way to a meeting of primarily college students where we were singing like we were tonight. And I stood there singing, just thinking that just a short period before this, had I come into this gathering, I would have observed what was taking place and thought everybody present was insane. Why are they singing? Who are they singing to? Look at those words. They are strange. God, wrath, sin, savior. And yet, that evening, I found myself singing to this one who had saved me from the justified, righteous, and furious wrath of God against me and all of my sins. <laughs>